continue our discussion for human anatomy and, phys and physiology from by this pre-recorded video so before we will go on to our topic for this afternoon let's know first the general objectives of this lesson so for the objectives identify the function of integumentary system and its specialized derivatives including the hair nails sweat and sebaceous glands label the structure of the skin and the subcutaneous tissues so that was the objectives for our lessons so since i've already mentioned our topic so today our lesson would be integumentary system so now let's proceed so let's define first what is integumentary system integumentary system it is com compromises the skin and its appendices, uh, appendages acting to protect the body from various kinds of damage such as loss of water or damages from outside it includes the skin and its specialized derivatives including the hair nails and seb sebaceous um, glands the mammary glands and teeth are also considered as component of the integumentary system so the system develops from surface ectoderm mesoderm and neural crest cell so meaning to say when we say integumentary system since it is includes skin and other specialized derivatives it is also called as the largest organ of the body while because it forms a physical barrier between the external environment and the internal environment that it is served to protect and maintain so you know as i've said it is largest organ because as we all know that the in external part of our or the outside appearance of our self is all skin so skin is for the protection of the internal organ so that's why it's called it is the the wall or the barrier para siyang wall the limitation of everything the the wall of your body why because it is it separates the external organ and internal organ so that is integumentary system so for the term to be unlocked we have ectoderm mesoderm and neural crest cells i will be discussing that further in the next slide okay so let's go now with the major function so i i oh, i i i introduces this one in the characteristics of life right in the odd in the in the levels of organization i already introduces the sorry the major organs for integumentary system so as i recall it we have skin hair sweat glands and nails and of course with the function i also introduce to you that since uh integumentary system is the largest organ and the largest organ in the integumentary system is a skin it protects against the environmental hazard it also helps regulate body temperature and al and also provides sensory information that is the major function for integumentary system so let's proceed so let's go now on discussing what is skin skin so meaning to say skin is a vital organ that covers the entire outside of the body forming a protective barrier against the pathogens and injuries from the environment okay when we say pathogens the, it is a term or it is an organism that causes a disease so that's why it is called pathogen uh, that's why it's called pathogen because it is literally uh, causes a disease or organism that causes the disease and um, to protect against pathogen skin is there or the organ skin is the one uh, with the power like protective barrier so meaning to say skin can protect us to the pathogens or to the organism that can cause disease skin also is uh, the body's largest organ as i've said a while ago that um integumentary system is called as the largest organ because it has the major organ uh, largest system because it has a lot uh, it has the the skin as an organ which is skin is called as the largest organ that's why it's it's called that integumentary system is the largest organ or a largest system because of the skin covering the entire outside of the body it is about two two millimeter 
thick and uh, weighs approximately 6 pounds. It shields the body against heat, light, injury, and infection. That's why skin is uh, called as a protective barrier. So meaning to say it separates the external or it protects uh, from the external, it protects it through the external and uh, wa, uh, uh, anong pinopotraktahan ni skin is our internal organ. Okay? So that's why it's called protective barrier organ. Okay, it helps also regulate body temperature, gathers sensory information from the environment, stores water, fat, and vitamin D, and plays a role in the immune system protecting us from disease. So, of course, uh, with regards to the body temperature, yes, um, our skin is very sensitive. It, uh, skin can sense, um, can sense uh, what happening in our outside or what happened to the external one so that's why it's called body temperature it can regulate body temperature because skin can can know kung if the place that nandoon tayo is cold or warm so that is why it is it can regulate body temperature and also skin can gather sensory information by by how or how so meaning to say skin is the one when you touch the, a different person skin ang unang nahahawakan right so that's why it can gather sensory information from the environment or from the place itself so let's proceed so this is actually uh the illustration or the pictures picture that can show the integumentary system so from the different parts of it so i will be discussing that one by one so let's proceed so the two major layers of the skin are the outer is called epidermis and inner dermis each of these layer is made of different t tissues and has a very different function so let's know uh, the differences of epidermis and the inner dermis okay this is actually the picture or illustration of epidermis and dermis. The color, thickness, and texture of the skin vary over the body. So again, the color or the thickness and the texture of the skin vary over the body. So the thickness of either dermis and epidermis is depend upon the location of its um, part. So yung thickness ni dermis and epidermis nakadepende pa rin po sa location nila. So this is the different uh, skin texture or uh, skin color. So let me explain it further. So this is the summarization between if you have a black skin or if you have a white skin. So for the black skin definition, black skin refers to the dark coloration of the skin due to the produ production of you melanin and humans white skin refers to the light coloration of skin due to the production of phyo melanin in humans y type of melanin produce ito you melanin is a dark brown to black color so those person that having a darker skin let's say it's a darker not a black because it is actually a <laughs> ano bullying part so in the darker skin um, you will you are producing a U melanin, meaning to say a your color is dark brown to black cor color. While if you have a white skin, it's called as phyo melanin because meaning to say you are producing um, red to yellow color of your skin. So the cell size of each um, skin would be larger cell size with the increased diameter and smaller cell size with this decrease diameter so this is particularly on the black and white skin so number of melanocyte high melanocyte count for black skin and low melanocyte count for white skin so for the exact amount of melanocyte or melanin that being that being produced in our body is depending on the color of the skin so meaning to say if you have a less melanin you are in a white skin if you have a high of melanin or melanocyte you are a black skin or your skin is darker 
Okay? Amount of melanin produced, of course, yun ang sinasabi ko, for black skin or darker skin, high, high siya, while in white skin, it is low. Again, melanin or melanocytes can be measured or can be or the amount of melanin that being produced inside our body or in the skin is depending on the color that we have. Meaning to say if you are darker, meaning to say that your melanin is high. High in the production of melanin, but if you are white person or white skin, you have white skin, meaning to say you have a less melanin that being produced. So this is the explanation between this illustration. Okay, next. Let's go now to the epidermis. Epidermis is made of stratified squamous keratinizing epithelial tissue and a thickness on the palms and soles. The cells that are most abundant are called keratinocytes. So please be reminded with the what name or what name of the cell that is more abundant or most abundant in the epidermis it is called keratinocyte and there are no capillaries present between them although the epidermis may be further subdivided into two or five sub layers two of these are uh, are the greatest importance with which is the innermost layer called stratum germativum and the outermost layer which is called as the stratum corneum so i will also discuss it one by one in the slide for the comparison and similarities or differences and similarities for the both uh, types of epidermis which is stratum germativum and the stratum corneum so let's proceed so stratum germativum is may also be called as the stratum basal each name tells as something about this layer to germinate means to sprout or to grow kaya nga it's called germinate germinate germinativum because it's coming from the root word of it germinate meaning to say to sprout or to grow that's why germinativum also is in the innermost layer so it is it is the base or basal means the base or lowest lowest part the stratum germinativum is the base of the epidermis the innermost layer in which mitosis takes place that is why um this um part of the of the integumentary system meaning to say the cell division or the division itself will start here so kaya nga, there is so-called mitosis because mitosis is part in the cell division or in the division. Meaning to say, division process takes place or start with the part of integumentary system called stratum germinativum. Okay, let's go on. New cells are continually being produced, pushing the old cells toward the skin score phase. This cell produce the protein keratin, and as they get further away from the capillaries in the dermis, so they die. As the dead cells are worn off the skin surface, they are replaced by cells from the lower layers scattered among the keratinocyte of the stratum germinativum are very different cells. It is called as a Merkel cells or these are the receptors for the sense of touch. So meaning to say that's why it's called as a process or that's why in stratum germinativum has the cell produced the protein keratin because keratin itself is an important protein in the epidermis or in the epidermis part of the integumentary system, particularly in stratum germinativum. It's intended actually for the formation of accessory organs. What are those accessory organs in our body? We have skin, hair, and nails. Um, it's it. Kaya nga, that is why keratin or protein keratin is located to the stratum granulosum or sta stratum stratum gran. Uh, stratum germinativum okay it's just a qu it's quite hard to pronounce it right okay so that is the protein that is the 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 explanation why in the process protein keratin there is so called a uh there is a process like this because keratin itself is a protein and that protein is located in the epidermis or the in the, in the stratum germinativum meaning to say that keratin is intended for the formation of 
the different accessory organs. So, what are those accessory? We have skin, hair, and nails. So, yan. Okay, let's proceed. The living portion of the epidermis also produces a vitamin. The cells have a form of cholesterol that on exposure to the ultraviolet light is, is, is changed to the vitamin D. This is why vitamin D is sometimes referred to as, as the sunshine vitamin. So what particular um, layer of the epidermis um, produces vitamin D? Of course, in the layer called stratum, again, stratum germinativum or stratum basal. Vitamin D produced in the two innermost strata of the epidermis. Okay, it is, it is, it can be found or it can be produced in stratum basal. Okay, or stratum germinativum. Okay, so that is um, the epidermis. Let's proceed to the stratum corneum. So, um, let me, let me, um, Give you another information. The cell that you can be found that can be found in the germ in the stratum germinativum is melanocyte, while while in the stratum corneum, the cell that is presented in stratum corneum, we have keren keret keretinocyte. Okay. So always remember that one that there are two um there are two different name of cell. From stratum germinativum, it is it is melanocyte, while stratum corneum, it is keratinocyte, okay? So, let's go now on discussing what is stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is also the barrier to path pathogens and chemicals. So, most bacteria and other microorganisms cannot penetrate under broken skin. The flaking of dead cells from the skin surface helps remove microorganisms and the fatty acid in sebum help inhibit their growth. That is why it is called or it can be the barrier of the pathogen or it can be a protector by barrier of the pathogen against the pathogen. Why? Because stratum corneum located in the outside of the epidermis. While uh, stratum germinativum is located in the innermost of the epidermis. So that is the differences between stratum corneum and stratum germinativum. Okay? Let's proceed. So this is actually the picture for the location of the different part of the integumentary system. So as you can see, we have stratum corneum here, La Gerhans cell, melanocyte, Merkel cell, dermis, sensory neuron, capillary, stratum germinativum, and mitosis. So as you can see, it's it's a quite the stratum germinativum or mitosis takes place in the stratum germinativum okay so let's proceed stratum corneum also is a certain minor changes in the epidermis when the first wearing new shoes for example the skin of the foot may be subjected for to friction so this will separate layers of the epidermis or separate the epidermis from the dermis and tissue fluid plum from up uh, tissue fluid may collect or causing a blister. If the skin subjected to pressure, the rate of the mitosis in the stratum germinativum will increase and create a thicker epidermis. We call this a cal as a callus. Okay, older calluses are more common in the palms and the soles. They may occur on any part of the skin. But literally, it, 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 it started with the stratum or the friction itself uh, or from the rubbing and friction, it can cause a calluses or a callus. So what is this calluses? So calluses is happen in the section of the skin that thickens because of the friction, pressure, or irritation. Most commonly, uh, why do calluses or where do, do calluses from? It's basically caused by repeated pressure or friction on any area of the skin. Um, not only friction, uh, you can be, uh, calluses also caused by the rubbing of the skin. So in calluses, it may occur first in the stratum corneum. Because like I've uh, said, when we say stratum corneus, it, uh, corneum, it is particularly on the outermost location or located on the outermost of the epidermis. Okay, let's proceed. 
So this is actually the different disorder or burns in our skin. So what happened if it is first burn, second degree burn, and the third burn degree, a uh, third degree burn. Okay, so that uh, this is actually I will not be, um, I will not be reading it. So let's let's just explain the first degree burn. So for first degree burn, it is also called as the superficial burn or wound. It it's an injury that affects the first layer of your skin. So, first degree burn is from your first degree, uh, or so sorry, first layer of your skin. So, that is the first degree burn. While the second degree burn, while in the second degree burn, it is quite what? Quite severe than the first degree burn because um, it affects the outer layer of the skin. If it if the first degree burn is for the first layer of the skin, um, second degree burn is quite severe because it is it can affect your outer layer of the skin. While in third degree burn, this is the type uh, or uh, in third degree burn, this is the type of a burn that destroys the skin the entire skin and may damage the underlying tissue so it's very crucial na dito sa third degree burn so from first degree to first layer of your skin to the second degree quite severe to first degree because it is it is uh the burn or it can affect to your outer layer of your skin while in the third degree burn it is very severe why because it can destroy the skin and can and may damage the underlying tissue. So that is the types of the burns in your skin. Okay, let's proceed. So this one, this is actually the pictures or the pictures that can show how the burn itself. Paano ba or ano ano ang ano ang itsura ng burn or ng ng burn if it is first degree, second. And third degree. So, for, as you can see, normal skin, makita mo rin, no? So, for the first degree, nandiyan pa yung slight red or slight inflammation. Then, second degree burn, inflammation na, na talaga. And the third, we have the, it's actually burned a, a lot of the ep epidermis. Oh, diba? So, that is the representation or the picture shows the different types of burn. Okay? Continue. So this is the summarization uh, between the types of the epidermis. We have stratum corneum. Ito na, I will not be reading it again because uh, you can read it the man. So this is uh, serve as the summarization for stratum corneum or the keratin itself. That's why I've said the cell that you can be that can be found in the stratum corneum is keratin, and from stratum dermativum or also called the stratum basal. The cell would be uh, the cell that can be found in the stratum germativum is melanocyte, and while Lagerhans cells, or when we say Lagerhans cell, it is actually a unique population of the tissue resident macro ma macrophages uh, that can form literally a network of cells across the epidermis of the skin. So that is the major function of Lagerhans. So, for Merkel cell, we have the receptors for sense of touch. You know that. That's why um, skin. Uh, that's why integumentary system or skin particularly can sense uh, sensory information. Why? Because of the Merkel cell that that are, uh, that that function as uh, receptors for sense of touch. Melanocyte produce a melanin on exposure to UV rays or particularly on the natural pigment or color of your skin. Melanin protects living skin layers from further exposure, exposure to UV rays. So melanin is produced by melanocyte and it can identify the color of your skin. Okay? So let's uh, proceed on knowing dermis so dermis is made of an irregular type of fibrous connective tissue irregular meaning that the fibers are not parallel but run in all direction we have five fi uh, fibroblasts produce both collagen and elastin fiber collagen fiber are strong and lastly 
Uh, strength and elasticity are two characteristics of the dermis. With increasing age, however, the de uh, deterioration of the elastin fibers causes the skin to lose its elasticity. So, meaning to say, uh, dermis is actually in the layer, uh, the layer of the skin that lies in the epidermis above the subcutaneous uh, layer. So, the function or dermis provides strength and flexibility to the skin that's why it's called uh, there is a elasticity with this one because the thickest layer of the skin is called um, dermis and why it is thick thickest uh, layer of the skin because it is made up of fibrous and elastic tissue that's why if there if there is a uh, elastic and fibrous tissue it can provide this your strength and flexibility of the skin so that is the major function of the dermis next so we have the part of the dermis. So for the representation of the part of the dermis, we have papillary layer. Contains capillaries that nourish the stratum germinativum. That is the major function of it. Hair or follicles, high eyelashes, and nasal hair keep dust out of eyes and nasal cavities. So I will be not be reading it here. Huh? We have nails, follicle, receptors, sebaceous glands, um, ceruminous glands, eccrine sweet glands, and arterioles. So these are the major function of that part of dermis. So let's uh, explain. I will not be uh, uh, explain it further with this illustration because I will be explaining it naman one by one. For the nail follicles, it is found on the end of the finger and tails. And toes, sorry. So nail follicles produce nails just as hair follicles produce hair. Mitosis uh, plays in the nail root at the base of the nail, and the new cell produced is keratin. So this is why cutting of a nail too short can be quite painful. Nails protect the end of the finger and toes from the mechanical injury and give the fingers greater ability to pick up small objects. So, yun pala oh. So, that would be the reason why if we cut our nails, na sobrahan natin siya ng pagkat masakit. Kasi nga, um, nails protects the end of our fingers and our toes. That is why if you sinasagad mo yung pag nail cutter, masakit na siya. Kasi the skin itself can 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 predict or can sense the pain that uh, that coming from uh, how you cut your nail. So napakadulo na. So meaning to say uh, there is no protection na because you cut your nail in the deepest part one, in the deepest part. Okay, that is nail follicles. So these are the pictures or shows sh that can show uh, the different types of the nail of our nail follicles. Okay, we have uh, you can eventually read it while you're listening to me, naman. So this is the part or the parts of the nail follicles. Okay, so now let's proceed. So the skin uh, contains many special cells and structure. One of it is basket cells. Basket cells surround the base of the hair, follicles, and can sense pressure. They are evaluated when assessing overall nerve health and condition. So meaning to say, basket cells is called as the multi, uh, multipolar inter interneurons because the function is to make uh, inhibitory synapses and control the overall potential of the target cells. So basket cells literally can be found throughout the brain in among other cortex. Okay, so that is the, bar uh, that is the basket cells. Okay, so this is a picture of a... Okay, so this is uh, the picture that uh, shows the illustration or shows the basket cell. So uh, this is from the electron. Uh, this can be viewed to, through the electron compound microscope. So you can view it even in the simple uh, microscope, but it is uh, more easier that, uh, that, you can be, that you can see it in the electron compound microscope. Okay, let's proceed. Blood vessels carry a nutrients and oxygen-rich blood to the cells that make up the layers of the skin and carry away waste hair, a uh, waste products. So, hair uh, erector muscles or erector pili muscles, 
this is these are the erector pili muscles that tiny uh, that called as a tiny muscles connected to each hair follicle on the skin when it contrast it causes the hair to stand erect and goosebump forms on the skin so yan pala that is the the reason why the hair erect or it is called as a hair erector muscle because um it is a it is a tiny muscle connected to your hair that when the there is a contraction itself uh it can in, it can cause us to a hair uh, to stand and erect. So, meaning to say, nagugusbam ka. Yan yung, yan yung dahilan because there is a hair erector muscle or it calls, uh, it called as er erector pili muscle. Meaning to say, it is a tiny muscle that connected to our hair. Bakit siya? Bakit tumatayo ang hair natin? Because of the hair erector muscle na, na nakakonected sa hair follicle natin. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon or kaya tayo nag goosebumps or kaya ang ating buhok sa skin ay tumatayo or nag -e erect Okay? Proceed like that, oh. This is actually a quite clip on how our hair uh, move or erect in our skin because of the hair erector muscle or erector pili muscle. Okay, let's proceed. Let's go now on discussing hair follicle. The hair follicle is tube-shaped sheet that surrounds the part of the hair that is under the skin and nourishes the hair. It is located in the epidermis and the dermis. So hair follicle it is uh, called also as a tunnel-shaped structure in epidermis. Hair follicle is particularly on the outer layer of the skin. Meaning to say, the hair starts growing at the bottom of the hair follicle. Okay, so uh, as more cells are created, the hair grows out of the skin and reaches the surface. So that makes the hair. Nakikita nyo with the picture? Yon. Again, hair starts growing at the bottom of the hair follicle. Ito, nakikita. Then, um, eh, as more the cells are created, the hair grows out of the skin and reaches the surface. So, that is the hair follicle. And also, sebaceous glands is near to the hair follicle. That's why hair can be produced as an oil. Bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng oil? Because sebaceous glands is actually connected, or not connected, but near to the hair follicles. So, that's why we can produce an oil, which can be nourishes the hair and skin, or can be the one to damage our hair. So, from uh, we all know that dandruff is coming from the oil of your hair. Okay, so that is the reason why we have a dandruff. Okay, it can produce, it can be, it can be nourishes your hair or can be damaged or be the one reason what, why, why your hair be damaged because of the oil. Produces of the oil. Why? Because of the sebaceous glands that is near to the hair follicles. Okay? Next, shape of the hair. Ayan no, meron. Straight hair, kinky hair, and meron din tayong curly hair. So as you can see, as, she, as you can see, the different shape for follicle, we have the kinky and straight is the same. Shape why while in the curly hair it makes us the flattened circle, then uh, the other one is the half flattened circle. So that is the differences between the shape of the hair. Okay, let's proceed. Hair shaft. So the hair shaft is the part of the hair that is above the skin. Okay, so yung parang it's like your baby hair that is the hair shaft. So literally, hair shaft is made up of dead cells that have turned into keratin and binding material together with a small water. So the function of the hair shaft is a trap or it uh, trap layer. It's also called the strap layer of air to add insulation and it is um, actually called a shaft because it it. it it serves us this the standing why our hair can be stand up because of the presence of hair shaft so that is the function and the location of hair shaft hair shaft again is the above 
uh, the, the, the hair that above in your skin and it is made up of dead cells don't don't be uh, please be reminded with that that it is made up of dead cells that have turned into keratin so that is half shaft hair shaft sorry hair shaft okay so the uh, the function of it is it a trap layer primary purpose of the hair shaft is uh, the trap layer of a, a air to add insulation okay let's proceed let's go now on larger hand cells these cells attach themselves to antigen that invade damaged skin and alert the immune system as i've said when we say larger hand cells it is a unique population of tissue resident resident mark macropages that form a network of cells across the epidermis of the skin so uh, literally, a location of Lagerhan cells is in the skin barrier. So, why in the skin barrier? Because it, uh, Lagerhan cell is a key role, has a, has a part of a key role in an immune sentinel. So, that is a Lagerhan cell. So, the major function of it is uh, to determine the appropriate adopted immune response. So, by interpreting the microenvironmental con context, in which they can, in which in the larger hand cells can encounter foreign substances. So that is larger hand cells. Okay, let's go on now in mel melanocytes. So melanocytes is a cell that produces melanin and con and located in the basal layer of the epidermis. So as I've said, melanocyte is a. Uh, uh, we can. Determine the melanocyte from the color pigment, or it is a natural pigment of the skin. So, melanocyte uh, produces a melanin, or melanocyte are melanin producing neural crest derived cells located in the bottom layer of our stratum basal or stratum germinativum uh, of the skin epidermis. So, the major function of our melanocyte, literally, it is our skin pigmentation. So, meaning to say, there, uh, there is ability or the mel melanocyte has an ability to produce and distribute mel melanin has been uh, melanin. Distribute or produce melanin. So, that's why we can uh, classify or identify the certain color of each person because of the production of melanocyte which is melanin uh, which is um, melanin that help to produce a certain or that help to identify our uh, color of our skin so let's proceed and um, let let me remind you that in melanin you can uh, you can you can d identify na Kasi kanina na discuss din natin, I've already tell you that you can identify the less and high melanin if it if if you are in a high uh, if if you are in a dark skin or your skin is darker meaning to say you have a high melanin but if you have a low melanin meaning to say you are uh, your skin is white so that is the differences on the skin color or the pigment pigmentation or, or the color pigmentation of your skin so let's go now with the merkel cell merkel cell is also known as merkel rain wear cells or tactile epithelial cells or oval shape mechanoreceptors uh, essential for light touch a sensation and found in the skin of vertebrates so meaning to say merkel cells as i've said is the receptors of touch so we can identify or we can feel touch because of merkel cells so also remember that one the receptors of the touch or we can feel that someone touching us because of the function of merkel cell yeah okay let's proceed with the pa pa sinian corpuscles okay a pacinian corpuscles is a nerve receptor located in the subcutaneous subcutaneous sorry subcutaneous fatty tissues that responds to the pressure and vibrations okay so meaning to say pa pacinian corpuscles respond when the skin is rapidly intended but not when the pressure is steady Kasi bakit? Bakit nga pasinyan is uh, focuses on the vibration? 
kung steady naman yung pressure, kung steady naman yung 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 nakastable ka naman, there there is no uh, response. Oo, walang response pa si niyan corpo, uh, corpus cells. But if the pressure is not stable and we have so-called this uh, vibration, so pasinyan corpus cell respond with the skin. Kasi yan yung main function niya eh. To what? To feel the pressure and the vibration. So the main, oh, okay, to the main function of it, kaya nga respond only to me mechanical deformation. Kaya nga it's, it's literally, um, um, coming from or depending on the pressure and vibration because if there is no uh, vibration or if uh, you are unstable, wala namang there is no uh, wala naman or pasinyan corpuses cannot be respond walang respond na mangyayari but kapag uh, there is a presence of pressure and vibration pasinyan corpuses respond through our skin Okay, so that is pasinyan corpus cells. Let's go now to the sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are a small sac-shaped glands which release an oily substances onto the hair follicle that calls and protects the hair shaft from becoming brittle. These glands are located in the dermis. Yon. So, bakit tayon? Makit may oil si air, si hair. So, can you can you observe when um kapag hindi tayo naligo ng three to two a two to three days, nagkaka oil ang buhok. So that is come from the sebaceous gland. So the oil is coming from or the oil or sebaceous gland release the oily substances. That is why kapag two to three days tayong hindi naliligo, may oil ang buhok. Napansin yun ba yon? May oil and and um, it is called pala as a sebum or sebum or uh, the spelling of it is S-E-B-U-M. If your skin will produce a very oily or at least a very oily, your body may be producing too much or se too much of sebum or sebum, leading to skin condition like acne and breakout. That's why I've said na kapag too much of oil or too much of releasing of oil, meron tayong tinatawag na dandruff. Or even pimples, acne, yan. So that's it. So that is from the too much of sebum or S E B U M. So yeah, yan. So let's proceed to the other slide. Sensory nerves. Okay, the epidermis is in, in innervated with the sensory nerves. These nerves sense and transmit heat, pain, and other nauseous sensations. When they are not functioning properly, sensations such as burning may be felt when evaluating a skin biopsy, total number, contiguity, uh, diameter, branching, swelling, and overall health of the sensory nerve are assessed. Actually, um, um, the reason why we can feel pain, like for example, if you pull your hair, bakit tayo mag masasaktan? Diba? Kasi merong tinatawag tayong scalp nerve. And that scalp nerve is called, so it's called as the supratoclear nerve. So again, the scalp nerve, uh, the scalp nerve is called as uh, supratoclear nerve. True clear nerve or S-U-P-R-A-T-R-O-C-H L-E-A-R tapos nerve. So, that is the reason why um, masakit kapag hilain natin yung buhok natin because of the scalp nerve. So, yun na nga, sinasabi natin that our skin has a sensory nerves. So, yun. So, that's why we can feel the pain. So, now, let's go with the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is the outermost. This is actually the the summary of stratum corneum is the outermost layer of the epidermis and is comprised of dead skin cells. I've already said this one. It protects the living cells beneath it by providing a tough barrier. Kasi nga, why? Stratum corneum is the outermost layer of the epidermis. So, stratum corneum is use useful for diagnosis because it, in some condition, it will become thinner than normal. So, the thick, the thick, uh, the thick and... Um, Stratum corneum or epidermis and dermis itself, uh, we can, it's depend upon with the location pa rin para ma-identify na natin if it is thickens. Kung mas 
ti mas uh, ano ba siya uh, what do you call this Tung if it tickens okay when i say tickens again if it is uh, kapal kung gaano ba kakapal yung yung ating epidermis or dermis so it depends upon on the location itself okay so let's proceed to the sweat glands okay sweat glands is uh, also called as sudoriferous gland so these glands are located in the epidermis and produce moisture or sweat that is secreted through the tiny ducts onto the surface of the skin which is uh, particularly so what type of surface or layer in the stratum corneum when the sweat evaporates skin to pressure is lowered so meaning to say sweat glands occur all over our body but most of the numerous of the sweat glands can be found on our forehead uh, forehead armpits palms and the sole of feet so the main function of the sweat glands is to control our body temperature so that is sweat glands so any questions clarifications with regards our topic for this discussion so thank you very much for your listening i hope you listen and view my discussion this is the last topic for our midterm so the coverage of your exam for anatomy is from the first lesson on midterm to the last lesson i already gave the powerpoint of it soft copy of the different lesson in our e-class can you check it please check it and downloaded it for you to have an access or para mas madali with regards to the topics itself so you can eventually look for the topic in topic then eventually listen to me so para mas madali just download your ppt okay if you have a question you can leave it to our gc thank you very much and have a safe day